Hey, Zion Whiteside, Pastor Kyle here with you tonight. Time for another Wednesday night devotion. Uh, as we continue our summer in the Psalms for a few more weeks, right? we got to enjoy the summer while it's still here. Uh, of course, school coming up at the end of this month. Yes, and we're excited for that. We really are. We really are. Uh, we just had an awesome week of vacation Bible school where we had over 80 kids uh, in our space. I'm sure you've all been watching the videos uh, that we've been posting on our Facebook page as well uh, and getting updates on that. It was truly an awesome week. And as we talked about uh, previously in worship, that is largely a volunteer run program. I know Pastor Welter and myself are, are very much involved with that, but we want to thank our Board of Christian Ed uh, for being the, the, the board that kind of runs that vacation Bible school planning and, and, and even the fulfillment of that. I want to thank all of our volunteers that came out uh, to help be group leaders and run games and run all the different stations uh, that we had. And, and a big thank you to all of you uh, for, for sending your kids to, to hear about Jesus uh, and to be a part of our vacation Bible school this year. Uh, what a joy it was each and every evening uh, to be able to hear and see uh, kids learning about Jesus and, and see the smile on their face and doing it. Uh, so today, kind of tackling a pretty big question. Uh, do you have to go to church to be a Christian? And we're going to use Psalm 111 to tackle that question. So why don't we just kind of start and just read the whole thing, and then we'll kind of go back and break it down uh, section by section. So here we go. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart and the company of the upright in the congregation. Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in him. Full of splendor and majesty is his work, and his righteousness endures forever. He has caused his wondrous works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He provides food for those who fear him. He remembers his covenant forever. He has shown his people the power of his works and giving them the inheritance of the nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever to be performed with faithfulness and uprightness. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. So we can start right there at the very beginning. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright in the congregation. Uh, that is one of the biggest reasons that we do what we do. That's why we have worship here at one place where everybody comes and gathers to do exactly that. Praise the Lord. Uh, as we gather, we have the proper understanding, knowing who is in charge and who is responsible for giving us and providing for us all that we need uh, to sustain this body and life. And so we gather and praise him and give thanks for that. Um, but there's more. There's more that happens at worship. Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them. Full of splendor and majesty is his work, and his righteousness endures forever. He has caused his wondrous works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and merciful. <clears throat> Again, that is what we do in worship each and every week. We hear readings, usually Old Testament epistle, which is New Testament, the letters that are written, so like Paul, um, and gospel, where we hear about the life of Jesus. So we have those three readings where we remember the works of God. We also remember a little bit more. Uh, the works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever to be performed with faithfulness and uprightness. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. So we remember how we are redeemed. That's gospel. We remember how we are redeemed 
through what Jesus has done for us on the cross, uh, and that the story doesn't end there. Uh, we hear how Jesus has risen from the dead, how his blood has brought us back, and now he has given us that life uh, that he has obtained through the resurrection. That all happens at worship. But then I think uh, this is the most significant part in answering the question, uh, do you need to go to church to be a Christian? Verse 5, he provides food for those who fear him. He remembers his covenant forever. We come to worship and, and we praise him and we give thanks to him. But then we can answer the question, does God need us to do that? In other words, does God stop being God if we don't do that? And the answer is no. God doesn't need anything from us. We still do it because we're called to do it. We, we give thanks and praise to him. Of course, we're going to do that. But I want you to think of worship as more of receiving than giving. So yes, we give thanks, we give praise. We do that in worship. We do so with our hymns. Uh, we think of the hymns that we sing. If you're a Wednesday night or if you're a 745 person, the hymns that we sing are giving thanks to God, are remembering the great works of the Lord. Um, I already talked about the readings and things like that. If you're a 930 person, which is our contemporary worship, uh, those songs that we sing really are the same. They really are uh, giving thanks to God and, and, and using scripture to speak of the works that God has done for us, mainly focused on Jesus, of course. So we do all those things. But worship is an act of receiving together with the body of believers. He provides food for those who fear him. When you come to worship, you are fed by his word, <clears throat> hearing his word of law and how uh, he has called us to live, hearing his word of law, law being a good thing. We remember God's law is good and perfect. We hear of his law of, of just how the world is supposed to work and how people are supposed to live together, how we as the church are to interact with one another and with uh, the unbelievers. That's God's law. Anything that you hear in church that has you as the doer of the verb, uh, that is God's law. And we hear that in worship. That's incredibly significant. That's you receiving that word. Then, of course, gospel, hearing how you have been redeemed. Hearing that, receiving that, that is an act of receiving his words of grace, his words of mercy, his words of love, his words of forgiveness. That every time in worship, we come together and we start. It's the first thing we do after singing the opening hymn, where we confess our sins, we repent, and then we receive absolution. Your sins are forgiven in the name of the triune God. There's nothing better. There's nothing better than you can receive right then and there. And then the main two things, sacraments. It is in worship where we come and, and we see uh, all people of all ages uh, being baptized and welcomed into the family of God. There's, no, there's nothing like baptism. There isn't. There's nothing like it. Where you are washed again in the name of the triune God and welcomed into the family of God, sins forgiven, receive the gift of the Holy Spirit to, to have that gift of faith renewed in you. And now you're coming to worship and hearing the word of God and having that faith strengthened and sustained uh, and, and built, building upon that foundation that has been given to you. That's receiving. That's a gift. That's why we gather in worship. And then this is why I particularly love what we do here at Zion Wayside. We have communion every single Sunday, every single worship service we're receiving the body and blood of Jesus as he feeds us, as he feeds us, uh, that our faith might be strengthened, that our sins might be forgiven. Uh, as we hear that blessing at the end, 
uh, that this life may be sustained unto life everlasting. Again, I say, there's nothing else like that. There's nothing else like that in this world that you can say, um, and now may this, the true body and blood of Jesus, strengthen and preserve you unto life everlasting. That's it. So, essentially, we're talking about the means of grace. Where do we find God to be present with us in the means of grace? It's in worship. And yes, you are encouraged to be in God's word at home, to have regular time of study, to have regular time of devotion, to have regular time of prayer. You're encouraged uh, to do those things. And I want to make this clear, be strengthened by that and, re- and, and be, have an act of receiving in that as well. Have your faith strengthened in that. But there is nothing like coming to worship and being a part of the congregation being a part of those who fear the Lord, who recognize what he's done for them, and most importantly, to be fed, to be fed in word and sacrament, that your faith might grow and be sustained unto life everlasting. You need to join us in worship, or to just go to church. Be in worship. Go to church. Because I'll just say it, when you go to church and you're receiving his gifts, There's no doubt. We don't have to worry about about, uh, eternal life. We don't have to worry about uh, being guilty and, 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 and questioning, am I good? Am I saved? Come to worship. Receive the gifts of God. Hear those words of forgiveness. Receive the sacraments. There's no doubt. There's no doubt. And that's what makes... Honestly, my job, so awesome that I can see hundreds of people gathered, uh, that I can see kids, 80 plus kids at VBS and, and, and hear them singing about Jesus and hear them proclaiming his word, see them and, and perceive them receiving the word of God to at worship be distributing the sacrament and, and seeing all the faithful people come to worship and saying, I know, I know. There's, there's, there's no doubt. Um, so be in worship. Be in worship. And as always, we have worship Wednesday night, 7 p.m., Sunday morning, 7.45, and Sunday morning, 9.30. Wednesday night and 7.40 and our 7.45 a.m. on Sunday being our traditional uh, service and our 9.30 being contemporary. And those are all services where you can gather uh, with the body of Christ to hear God's word to receive his sacrament. And thanks be to God for that. So hope to see you all on Sunday. Uh, Have a great week and we will see you soon.